Today is a historic day in Chargers history as they have signed Justin Herbert to a long-term contract extension in hopes that he can be the guy to bring this team its first championship. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer, and we've been covering the Chargers together now for seven seasons, but this is our fifth season as a host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys on a day like today for making us your first listen as always, and to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and listen to the show wherever you get your podcast from. David, whatever could we be talking about today? None other than the momentous, gigantic contract extension between Justin Herbert and your Chargers. Huge, massive contract. Great that this got done. Can Justin Herbert be the guy to bring the Chargers their first championship? And how can the Chargers now maximize this Super Bowl window? We know Justin Herbert's going to do his part, but the Chargers have to do their part, right? And probably fix some of the mistakes they had in the Phillip Rivers era. But this episode of Locked on Chargers is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. So for parts that fit, head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay Guaranteed Fit. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. David, what a momentous occasion, as you called it. A huge day in Chargers history. This is a special moment because this promises what could be in the bright future that is to come for a team that has been slowly on the rise. And we all knew that Justin Herbert was an elite quarterback and he gets a five-year, $262.5 million contract. Now, the highest paid player in NFL history on a per-season basis. David, this is absolutely huge for the Chargers to get this deal done. It was never a matter of if this deal was going to get done, Daniel. It was only a matter of of when. Today was that day. Finally, they put this behind them. Justin Herbert is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Not only is he one of your best players, he's one of the best players in the league. So not only do you secure and lock up one of the most important players on your team, you get to do that and do that with a player that is right now top five at his position so i think it's a massive absolutely monumental important day for the chargers to secure one of their cornerstones one of the people one of the players that is going to be the reason why they are going to be a perennial super bowl contender yeah exactly and that's what this buys them for themselves and i mean it could have been any amount of money and i would have been on here saying pretty much the same thing it was a playing yeah. check always he is going to be worth every penny but what he has done like the player the Chargers are getting knowing he can get better but even what he's already done has been historic right most passing yards ever in the first three seasons of any quarterback's career most total touchdowns most 300 yard games most completions already has the most touchdown throws in a single season by any Chargers quarterback and that includes you know Philip Rivers and Dan Fouts and Drew Brees and the other greats in their pantheon and I think bigger picture this just extends your super bowl window i mean we've talked a lot about it it would be easier when justin herbert was on a rookie contract obviously but as long as you have this dude on your team you are going to have a chance and i think not just having a chance you know for a super bowl just in general but also just any given sunday you are giving yourself a good chance to win i talked about earlier when i posted a clip just saying like there's so many great quarterbacks and it's going to be tough obviously for him to get over the mountaintop but like you're always giving yourself a chance with Justin Herbert every given Sunday and every season he's your quarterback. You're going to have that chance to potentially go do what this franchise has never been able to do. You're right, but I'm going to sit here and tell you right now that I think Justin Herbert is going to be the quarterback to not only win an MVP award, but he is going to be the guy that brings the Chargers their first Super Bowl championship. And the reason for that is because of talent, arm strength, 
accuracy, aggressive mindset, movement skills in and out of the pocket, intelligence, his natural intelligence, and the intelligence he's gathered in game. This is a very, very cerebral player. He's a guy that only gets better with experience. He's a guy that learns on the fly, and I can't wait to see what else he does. And also the third reason, the people around him. I think now he has the right supporting cast to get him to where he needs to be and unlock the massive potential that we all know that Justin Herbert has. I mean, that is a heck of a take, obviously. I mean, saying he's going to be, you know, do what we've seen other greats not be able to do. This Chargers franchise has been around a long time. They have never got the big one. It's hard for me to have a good argument against it. I absolutely think he's going to get it done. At some point, potentially, if anyone can, it would seem like he would be that guy. But you're saying by the end of this contract, he's going to have a Super Bowl? I am. I'm saying that right now. I, th I think we're right now in the midst of the window where Justin Herbert is right on the cusp of unlocking the like the real potential and getting to where he is the player that we all expect him to be. He's still very, very young, and I feel like he's been building and building, but he also hasn't been in the right situation. I feel like right now with all of the things around him and where he is stepping into his prime, I think this is the time where Justin Herbert gets it done for the Chargers. Yeah, I think the only downside to this deal is that it's not longer. I mean, yeah. I absolutely, you know, I mean, obviously there's the outlier quarterbacks that have gotten it of done. Course. The Trent Dilfers of the world, right? Obviously the corpse of Peyton Manning that final season <laughs> when he won in Denver. But, like, this is a guy that's going to give you, you know, it, it, if you have, every year you don't win a Super Bowl, like most of the time it's not going to be because you didn't get good enough quarterback play. And that's right. what Justin Herbert is going to bring to this Chargers franchise through 2029, which is so exciting. But it, the most exciting thing will be when if he actually can get it done. But yeah. taking a look at the contract, I mean, it's huge, David. I mean, according yeah. to Adam Schefter, up to $218.7 million guaranteed out of a $262.5 million contract, <sighs> 133.7 fully guaranteed, 193.7 million with the injury guarantee. That's part of it as well, but also a no trade clause. Right. And I think that the reason the Chargers didn't sign him longer was probably not because the Chargers didn't want to sign him longer. Probably because it makes a lot more sense for Justin Herbert to cash in again. Because as of right now, I think as Chris Harey put it, he's going to be back in as a free agent, as a 32 year old potentially after whatever he does these next seven seasons. Well, yeah. I mean, you look right now at the, you know, the contract that Patrick Mahomes signed. And now, at this moment, he is the eighth quarterback in average annual value uh, per year in, in, in money. So, like, that's the reason why Justin Herbert and his team is going to be like, no, why would I want to sign a, you know, 10-year contract when you can control the cost like that and I miss yeah. out on another opportunity to get another big contract? So, I mean, of course the team would love that, but, you know, that was never going to happen. So, yeah, this is a huge deal. It's $52.5 million per year, which is the most of out of any other player in NFL history is the highest per year amount. And also, Justin Herbert gets $100 million of that in year one of the contract so definitely going to be more interesting to see how they kind of you know mess with that cap hit and how they manipulate that so they can give themselves some space to do some other things during the life of that deal yeah i mean it's awesome man it obviously becomes a lot tougher when you have that contract hit and you know that cap yeah. hit in your salary but like still like it's just the best one of the best days ever in charge such a great history. feeling and that's just what it is because it's like you know, I mean, teams literally go their entire existence without a quarterback this good, right? Like, you think about all the teams with bad quarterback playing. For the Chargers to have the run that they've had it's with these guys is insane. Even if you have to make him the highest paid quarterback in the league, he absolutely deserves it. If you're top five at your position, if you're top ten in some cases, you're going to reset the market. So I'm yep. not worried about, oh, hey, he didn't leave enough money for the Chargers to work around him. Honestly, the $100 million in the first season – Makes me think that they're absolutely trying to maximize what oh, yeah. he can do. Because if you're giving that much away and a big time signing bonus, which is yet to come with some of the contract de details we don't have yet, that means you're moving some money around to try to get the most out of this possible. And then, you know, as some of those bigger cap hit years come later down the road, as they inevitably will, then you extend them. Then you keep working with the numbers and just trying to keep giving yourself as much flexibility around Justin Herbert as possible. So I'm guessing the game plan is we'll see as more of those details come out. But 
The thing is, David, now we know Justin Herbert's going to come through. He's good enough to go get it done. We've seen it over his first three seasons. He's been, you know, record setting to say the least. But what can the Chargers do for him? Because that's the next most important part is what comes next. And then if the Chargers really want to get over the hump, there are some things that they're going to have to be able to get done around Justin Herbert to fully maximize this window that he has right now through 2029. So we're going to get into what those things have to be like. Maybe get him a defense, right? That would be a great start because he's had one of the league's worst since he got in the league. So we're going to get into that and much more on this monumental day coming up right after this. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life we're faced with or in the past was just being able to get out of my own head. And I think everyone has had that feeling before when you say something to a loved one, to one of your friends, and you're like, oh, just saying it makes me feel so much better. It's a weight that's lifted off my shoulder. That's how I always feel when I go to BetterHelp, because whether you're dealing with decisions around career relationships or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. That is crucial when it comes to me because I have a very, very busy schedule. And all you have to do to get involved is just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And the great thing is, is you can switch therapists anytime. If you don't get the right fit, don't be afraid to go get the right fit. And you can do that for free with BetterHelp. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn. David, we have talked about all the things that Justin Herbert will bring to the table as this franchise quarterback. And man, am I so excited to see him at Chargers training camp tomorrow as this or today. As you guys are hearing this, you might be listening to this on the way up to Chargers training camp. We appreciate everyone out there, but appreciate very, all very our excited. Days, man. Thank you. And later on tonight, guys, we might be back with a live show talking about everything that goes down on day one of training camp. And hopefully I'll see you guys out there for the everydayers. Who want to come show their support? I'm happy to say hi to anyone. I hope I get to say hi to a lot of you guys. But we talked about what Justin Herbert's going to bring to the table. But we've seen great quarterbacks in Chargers past, David. The Chargers have had Phillip Rivers, who's a Hall of Fame quarterback. They have had Dan Fouts, who's a Hall of Fame quarterback. And yet they still have zero championships. So as much as we are excited about Justin Herbert, what's next has much more to do with what the Chargers can put around Justin Herbert to help this team get over that hump, right? And which they've never been able to do. So when I was looking at, okay, what do the Chargers have to do for Justin Herbert? One of the first things that came to my mind, get him a defense, right? The Justin Herbert has had one of the worst defenses surrounding him since he's been in the NFL and they brought in Brandon Staley to help, but we'll talk about him. But I just think that, you know, it's an easy place to start because this dude has done what he's been able to do while kind of dragging one of the worst defenses over his first three seasons. And I think this stat here from Barstool Sports, it really illustrates this point very, very beautifully. 1,233 points scored in the, in the start through the first three seasons is the most in NFL history since the merger. That is the points that Justin Herbert has, has made. But the Chargers defense has allowed 1,256 points in those first three seasons. So... Justin Herbert's had to put on which Superman's is also the cape, most of all time, yeah. which is the most out of all time since the merger. Yes, which that's Justin Herbert having to bail out his team time and time and time again. He's had to put on Superman's cape. He's had to be Mr. Everything, Mr. Everywhere. And if he just has a defense that is league average. I mean, a, a defense that, that can, can control itself against the run, not give up the crazy explosive plays. You're going to see a, such a different version of Justin Herbert and a more dominant version of this Chargers offense in general. Yeah, I mean, the defense absolutely helps out the offense. But, like, I just need the defense to help out the defense. Right? Yeah. Like, it's just, I mean, this is where they've ranked in points allowed per game since Justin Herbert came in the league in 2020. They were 23rd in 2020, 29th in 2021 in 22nd in 2022 so and since he's been in the league he's had a bottom third defense and that's just not good enough obviously they're the outliers of teams who can win with bad defenses but like just give him a competitive defense the chargers have stars they just haven't been able to surround the star players that they have with the right mix of guys and like it's just if you have justin herbert on offense almost no matter what's around him and you pair that with a good defense like yeah that's what we haven't seen 
through right, his first yeah, three seasons. Out, right? And that's one thing the Chargers have to figure out as they move forward. And it's only going to be tougher because of the contract limitations that they're going to have now. Yeah. But I think another thing about this is just with the limited space the Chargers are going to have, Tom Telesco or whoever the GM is, and that's not to take a shot, but like just throughout the rest of this contract, whoever the general manager is for this team has to be better at hitting on their draft picks because you need as much cheap talent to go around Justin Herbert in that contract as you can. And yeah. also just has to make the right decisions to kind of keep weapons around him and to be able to keep protecting him and all the other things that become tougher. Yeah, I mean, you're just going to have to be a lot more frugal with your money and, and your cap space because you're not going to have as much of it as you had before. Justin Herbert's contract is going to take up a large portion of that cap, so you're going to have to be very intentional and very specific with how you use your money in free agency, and you're going to have to have a much higher emphasis on hitting on your draft picks up and down your draft. You're going to have to find contributors up and down, just like the Kansas City Chiefs. This is a team that has a quarterback on a giant contract, but they stay competitive every year because they're very specific and intentional with their moves they make in the offseason and their draft picks. They've hit on yeah. a lot more late round draft picks, which has helped them really, really be a team that's been really difficult to beat. Yeah, I remember at one point I looked at the stat and it was something like 12 players they had drafted since you know the last in the last two seasons have played at least like 250 snaps for them last year they get That's contributions the chiefs do throughout the draft and that is something the chargers have to aspire to right and like they yeah. haven't been good enough while justin herbert has been on his rookie contract it has to get better going forward and there's going to yeah. be just much less margin for error there i think another part of it too is just making sure that you have the right guy that's paired up with Justin Herbert, right? And to some extent, that's killing more, but you have to have the right man in charge, and that is Brandon Staley. And I think that's why this season is going to be so huge for as far as figuring out if he's that guy, because now you have the franchise quarterback. You have expectations now that can't just be making the playoffs, right? The expectations are higher now with Justin Herbert locked up through 2029. You better make sure that Brandon Staley is the right dude to go along with this guy. Yeah, I mean, because obviously the, the Chargers organization has already expressed full confidence in Justin Herbert by this contract that they you know struck with him. So they expect him to be the guy that's going to take them places. But your best players are only as good as the coaching staff around them and the guys that are going to be putting them in positions to go out there and succeed. So Brandon Staley's seat is very, very hot. And I think after this contract here, Playoff success has to come. I mean, yeah. it, it has to. I mean, it has to come for Brandon Staley. And, and if not, I mean, you can't sit here and waste years of Justin Herbert's prime because that's where he is entering right now. At 25 years old, this contract takes him through his prime years. You yeah. want a coach that is going to maximize the ability to win with your quarterback on this type of contract. So, Brandon Staley is going to have to put up or shut up very, very quickly, or else the Chargers are going to have to find the right coach to pair with their superstar quarterback. Absolutely. And the thing is, is the best case scenario is it is Brandon Staley, right? Like, yeah. that's what all Chargers fans should be hoping, you know, more than anything. Because the thing is that you want is stability. And, you know, Philip Rivers had four different coaches over his career, right? And we had Marty yeah. for the first, you know, several seasons. And that one obviously was great. But then just kept filtering through guys again there was no stability there was you no. know several five and six win seasons mixed yeah. in there and it's just you want it to go differently this time because yes. that's what this is about like we saw all of the errors when the chargers had philip rivers and you know just them failing to be able to surround him with the right pieces to go win a super bowl or just even to be competitive year in and year out to be yep. contenders inside the division and like the chargers have to get it right this time they have yeah. another star player they have another top of the league quarterback the most talented quarterback in chargers history you have to get it right this time yeah learn from the ghosts of girlfriends past right <laughs> you know yeah. learn from the mistakes that you made with Philip Rivers, with yeah. a guy that was such a gamer, such a competitor. Learn, make sure that you you have all of the necessary weapons and all of the protection and all of the things that this player needs to go out there and do what his job is at the highest possible level and get the most output from it. Yeah, especially just because I think, you know, with Brandon Staley, they're already a little bit behind the eight ball by having a defensive guy in charge yeah. of, you know, one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. It can work. Like, Bill Belichick was a defensive guy. Like, John Harbaugh wasn't an <laughs> offensive guy. Mike Tomlin wasn't an offensive guy coming in. Yeah. But 
a lot of the best coaches that you think about around the league are offensive-minded guys paired up with really, really good quarterbacks. That's the combo you want. Hopefully, the Chargers have the next best thing, which is having a great offensive coordinator to pair with Justin Herbert. And Kellen Moore, I think, is a big reason why we think the Chargers are kind of going to get even more out of Justin Herbert, no pun intended, in 2023. I mean, it definitely, David, could be his best season yet. He has a coordinator. He has some weapons. He has an offensive line. So we're getting to why we think Justin Herbert is in store for his best season yet coming up right after this. It is very important for the Chargers to make sure they have the right coaching staff around Justin Herbert now that they've signed him through the 2029 season. I mean, he's been outstanding, one of the best in the league, right? Even maybe being handcuffed by Joe Lombardi. But I do want to talk about what the Chargers can do to kind of get more out of Justin Herbert because the Chargers aren't paying Justin Herbert for what he did, right? Chargers are paying Justin Herbert for what he's going to do for the next seven seasons, which it's hard to believe could be even better than the version we've seen from him in his first three years. Like we know that the offense felt like it left a lot on the table in 2022. And that's one of the other crazy exciting things, David, about this upcoming season is now you have Kellen Moore. And I think that is one of the biggest reasons why Justin Herbert could be in for his best season yet. Yeah. I mean, and, and for, for Justin Herbert, he has a guy and Kellen Moore that truly understands and, and believes in what Justin Herbert brings to the table. This is from Daniel Popper's uh, article. Justin's combination of arm talent, size, and athleticism is very rare, not just now, but ever. I think that right there is a statement that, yeah, sure. that makes you understand that Kellen Moore understands the assignment. And I think there's a lot of reasons why you get excited about Kellen Moore coming in and being that guy. It's more aggressive play calling. It's throwing the ball down the football field when you have a quarterback that has one of the biggest arms in the game. And then bringing in a rushing identity and that's going to be more efficient and more effective to be able to take some of that work, some of that responsibility off of Justin Herbert's plate. Yeah, and I think even outside of Justin Herbert, right, having someone that you feel I like can get the most out of the entire offense, right? Not exactly. only that, you know, can help the running game, but like knows how to use the guys that he has, you know, involved with it, right? And, and yeah. getting the most out of the other weapons and knowing how to use his weapons in the right situations, putting them in the right positions, knowing how to, right, get the tempo going, knowing how to switch things up and be able to set up plays for later on in the game and run up the score. These are all the things that we're very excited about yes. with Kellen Moore. And, I mean, it'll be great to see what it looks like, you know, with more autonomy of this offense not being under Mike McCarthy or Jason yeah. Garrett as he's been right. in years past. And speaking of which, Daniel Popper put out a very, very good article on The That's Athletic amazing. about Brandon Staley in Kellen Moore's relationship and why these two hit it off, you know, pretty well. Maybe we'll talk about that on another show because that was really, really good stuff in there. I thought one of the funnier things, though, is, of course, Brandon Staley's so excited about Kellen Moore because Kellen Moore reminds him of himself, Brandon Staley, <laughs> and when he went with Sean McVay in the Rams. But we're very high on Kellen Moore, and it'll be very exciting to see what he can do with Justin Herbert because, like I said, like it feels like this dude is barely scratching the surface. I mean, even the national, you know, media guys we've talked to, Brian Balding, right, Matt yeah. Williamson. yeah. They all, everyone was in agreement that Joe Lombardi had to go. I mean, in mm -hmm. Matt Williamson's word, right? Like, Kellen Moore should be great because he's not Joe Lombardi. The Chargers <laughs> yeah. have now a, a proven play caller, a play caller yeah. that's proven that he can evolve in games and with the guys he has. Went 4 0 with Cooper Rush as his quarterback. Like, his track record speaks for itself. Yeah, the adaptability the first time. in his game, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Totally. And this is easily the most proven play caller that Justin Herbert's ever had. Yeah, Shane Steichen's been great and was great last season, of course. Sure. Right? But, he, but he was a rookie play caller when he started with Justin Herbert. So. Exactly. So, like, this, there wasn't the same situation as what he had this year in Philadelphia, obviously, running yeah. that offense. But, like, this is the best case scenario the Chargers really could have come away with, in my opinion, during this offseason, unless it's just, you know, an unheralded mind that no one has found yet, right? Just a hidden yeah. gem that we just don't know is going to be good yet. You sure. know Kellen Moore has done it at this level, and one of the bigger reasons we think Justin Herbert will have his best season this season, you know, winning an MVP potentially, at least being yeah. in that race, being able to put up better numbers than the best numbers the Chargers have seen in franchise history is because he has the weapons right now. We talked about it before. He was ranked on ESPN, right? Top five arsenal in the NFL going into this season. 
and the Chargers will have to keep that up, right? Because yeah. this core is only around for so long. But this year, with Austin Eckler and Gerald Everett and Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, the infusion of Quentin Johnson, he has the weapons to absolutely go out there and have his best season yet. Yeah, absolutely, Daniel. My goodness, like there's so much firepower, and there's so many different ways that these weapons can hurt you. I mean, there's just there's. I mean, you pick your poison. I mean, the, that's the beautiful thing is this offense is very, very multiple, and it can go out there and really be the kind of offense it needs to be on a weekend, week out basis to be able to beat their opponent. I mean, you have Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Quentin Johnston, Josh Palmer, Jalen Guyton, Gerald Everett. Darius Davis, you have so many different players that have unique skill sets that the Chargers are going to be able to use. And that's why I think it's another reason why you get really excited is not only do you have an accomplished play caller, you have an accomplished play, play caller that has all of these weapons to play with and build his offense the way he wants it to be and be able to showcase it to the world. So, yeah, so much firepower for Justin Herbert to go out there and utilize. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he led a, a top five offense in the league in four years with Dallas with, you know, Dak Prescott basically missing a season's worth of game during that time. Yeah. And now he has guys in this locker room, right, that would rival any kind of offensive skill position talent that the Cowboys had, right? I mean, one oh, yeah. year they had Gallup and, you know, they also had Amari Cooper before they traded him away and C.D. Lamb. And that maybe yeah. you know, you could argue that receiving core. But, like, this is the best receiving core that Justin Herbert has ever had. Oh, I mean, yeah. Maybe you go back to 2020, he had Hunter Henry, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. But I think this is a better version of Mike Williams and Keenan Allen when they're healthy. And yeah. I think that Gerald Everett, like, if he's the fifth guy that people are game planning for to stop the Chargers passing attack, like, that's a guy that's hard to kind of match up with one on one, okay. right? So, like, if that's the kind, of, it's going to be so hard to game plan for this offense with all the different guys that can affect you. Because, like, Austin Eckler's higher up in that pecking order. Quentin Johnson could be higher up oh, yeah. in that pecking order. Obviously, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. But it all has to come together one way. And it did in Dallas for Kellen Moore with a great offensive line. And I think that's yeah. the other reason that Justin Herbert could have his best season yet. Because, David, I think this could be his best offensive line yet. I think there's no question that this is the best offensive line that he's had and I honestly think it's probably the best offensive line the Chargers have had for 10 or 15 years I just think the mix of talent youth and experience is right where you want it to be you have an all pro left tackle you have a guard that's a first round pick that's going back to his more natural position you have an all pro center in the middle a guy that is just an unbelievable uh, just incredible player, a, a general, a commander in the, in the middle, a guy that sets protections, takes some work off of your quarterback's plate, a guy who played left tackle for you last year in Jamari Sawyer, who's coming in to play guard that I think is probably more profiled to play guard, and Trey Pipkins, a guy you just gave a brand new contract to, who has quietly become one of the best right tackles in the NFL. I think the mix of youth, experience, strength, intelligence there's so many different reasons why you should be excited about this chargers offensive line that's going to be blocking for justin herbert yeah i mean i think you know when we were talking about the offensive line rankings most people think this is going to be a top 9 to 12 offensive line no brandon thorne who's definitely one of the more valued opinions i have on offensive line boy adam is a top five offensive line going into 2023 i mean it definitely has that potential some things are going to have to fall into place of for course. sure but I was talking on Twitter earlier. I wonder what that bill was going to be when Justin Herbert takes these dudes out for the first time and see how many you know, pounds <laughs> of food those guys can put away. Because Justin Herbert's paying all of the bills from here on out, and you know he's happy to do it. He better oh, get yeah. some nice gifts for that offensive line, though. You know, I'm thinking definitely some Rolexes or something for those. Maybe oh, bare minimum. or whatever it's going to be. But it's exciting. It's a very, very exciting time. This offensive line absolutely could be much better than what Justin Herbert's had throughout the rest of his career, right? I mean, he had the best rookie season ever with Dan Feeney and Forrest Lamp in front of him. He had his best season ever with Storm Norton playing right tackle for the whole season in 2021. So it, this, if it's a top 10 line, this Chargers offense can do anything it needs to do. And hopefully that's also opening more in the running game. Yes. And just mostly like taking some off of Justin Herbert's plate. He's going to be great. If you can surround him with other greatness, the sky is the limit for this team. But what a good day in Chargers history. What a historic day. David, the future is bright with the Chargers, and it's going to be so, so exciting. And somehow our company, the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day trusts us you know, with the most valued product in the NFL right now, Justin Herbert. We're so excited to cover it with you guys and excited to be back here tomorrow as the everydayers already know. 
you guys deserve this. You guys deserve this contract extension, and you have a great quarterback to follow because you guys are a great fan base. But to make sure you're back with us tomorrow, you can follow us on all of our social media. I will be posting out there from Chargers Training Camp. Make sure you're following me at Dan Talk Sports on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, because I will be posting updates all day long, hopefully seeing you guys out there. You can find David on Twitter at DrotalkSD and the show's page at Locked on LAC. He'll be retweeting the show's page. We'll have some stuff on as well. But you can also find us on Instagram at Locked on Chargers and our Locked on Chargers Facebook page. To make sure you never miss the show, though, go subscribe or follow for free on the Locked on Chargers YouTube channel so you don't miss giant episodes and giant shows like this. So much to be excited about. And make sure you listen wherever you get your podcast from as well. But tomorrow is day one of training camp. Today is day one of training camp. Make sure you're back here for, with us later for potentially a live show tonight. But until then, guys, take it easy and go Bolts.